up! I said get up, you drunken slut! Didn't I tell you to stay away from my daughter? I didn't need to see Martha yesterday, Mr. Fenn. It, it, it just happened, accident like. I... Well, I'm going to teach you so it'll never happen again. Accident or no? Well, I didn't mean to see you, Mr. Fenn. No. What's the matter with you? Why don't you stand up and fight? Uh, good thing your pa never lived to see you like this. Cimarron City is a pretty quiet town after dark. Ordinary nights, you can always find a few strays drinking Jed Fame's liquor at the Oklahoma Saloon. On Thursdays, sometimes we have a little poker game. Nothing to get too excited over, just hometown talent. I'm Matt Rockford, mayor of this cow town. And it's a pretty good thing I don't have to depend on my poker playing for a living. Uh, my name is Addison, John Addison. Mind if I sit in? A drink is a poor substitute for company when you're in a strange town. I'm Matt Rockford, mayor. Lane Temple, our deputy. Howdy. Howdy. Have a seat. Thank you. Mr. Evans and Mr. Short are cattlemen from up north. The man with all the money is Jed Fame, the fellow who runs this place. Howdy. How are you? You didn't say what your line was, Mr. Addison. Oh, I'm a surveyor. We're making some new maps of the territory. I certainly appreciate being let into the game, gentlemen. I'd like to stand around to drinks. Bartender? Evening. All right, gentlemen. Who wants a song for a quarter? Or a part thereon, too? What'll be your pleasure? Patriotic songs? I got them north, I got them south, or I got them in between. How about you, Mr. Rockford? I got some mighty sweet music in this here box. Sit down, Ossie. I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Yeah, that's mighty generous of you, Mr. Rock. I'd sure appreciate having coffee with you, but these are my working hours. Can't do no till I pick me up at least a quarter. Just uh, two bits. Enough for a shot. Sound like one shot already, Ossie. Rye whiskey, rye whiskey, rye whiskey, I cry. If I don't get rye whiskey, I surely will die. It's not the thirst that kills a man, it's the quenching of it. Now say, that's an even more likable way to die. Hey, I got some valuable here, mister. I'll sell it cheap for cash. I see everybody knows what you got there. Oh, hey, don't be a stranger. Not interested. Here, here's a dollar. Go buy yourself a drink. Say, this here's a cartwheel. Four two bitses. Now on Limburger elbow. Do you mean fanning out your cards, Addison? I got a feeling I maybe dealt you one too many. Of course not, Mr. Fame. But I think I have only five. Well, maybe I was mistaken. Okay, hit it again. I still got three big drinks in this cartwheel. I'll fill it up to the top, mister. Yeah, my money's hard come by. Wasn't very wise of you giving him that money. Well, there's one like him in every town. Sickly cold out of a bad bloodline. You're not a very good judge of bloodlines, Mr. Addison. Virgil Harper was Ozzy's father. Those are Virgil Harper's guns over there on the wall. He brought the first wagon train into this country. Rode out to the Badlands all by himself and made a treaty with the Osage and the Cherokees. Did you know him? No, it was before my time. I knew him when I was a kid. He used to scout with the cavalry out of Fort Maxwell. Ozzy was just a baby then. Came into Virgil's life kind of late and unexpected. You probably noticed the big sycamore as you rode into town. That's, that's where Virgil Harper is buried. Died with an Apache lance through his chest. My father planted that tree in his memory. Cimarron City sort of grew around it. 
sorry, gentlemen. I guess this just isn't my night. Come on, Arsene. I've been watching you real careful, Mr. Addison. We like the cards on top of the table. Gentlemen, if you don't trust me... Oh, we trust you. Just keep the cards top and front. I think I'd better check out. Sit down. Sit down. Sit, sit down. This game's just getting interesting. Now... We'll see how good a poker player you are with your hands at least five inches over the table. Very well, gentlemen. Any way you like. Oh, weep no more round Virgil's grave. Weep no more, my friend. And listen while I tell the tale. How a brave man met his end. Ossie? You better keep right on walking, Martha. Somebody will see. They'll be proud to tell your pa you stopped talk to me again. I don't care. No, he won't touch you. You're too uh, big for a licking in the shed, ain't you? He'll just beat on me like he done yesterday. Ossie, I told my pa if he ever did that again, if he ever hurt you, I'd never speak to him again. You scare him much? Why do you have to be mean to me? You used to tell me you felt different. Sure. And I sung you sweet songs. We was going to get married without even giving your pa a chance to say no. What happened, Aussie? What went wrong? I got drunk. Why didn't you tell me? Well, it was the next day your pa caught me and allowed he'd teach me I wasn't to come bothering his daughter no more. He taught me real good. Aussie, will you please look at me? Look, I won't lie to you. I see you walking in the street, driving past in a rig with your clothes all tied together, so tight and trim, like words that go pretty with a proper tune. You know what that does to me? It dries me up. And when I get dry... Ossie, if you ever did love me, you wouldn't go on acting this way. Aussie? You come back any time, Mr. Addison. Always glad to cut a stranger in, as long as it's our rules. So you out too, huh? Get away from me. Hey, what's the matter, Mr. Addison? You lose? Yes, I lost. Frozen out by a 45. Hey, you want to make some money? I, uh... I got something valuable here. Oh, leave me alone. Look, you ain't from around these parts, Mr. Addison. My name's Harper. Ossie Harper. Virgil Harper's boy. Oh, you drunken fool. Hey, wait, wait a minute. You take a look at this. This is all my pa left me when he died, except in a claim on an army pension they wouldn't pay because, uh, well, I, I couldn't prove regular how I come to be born. Not interesting. Hey, look, it's a mining claim. It was my pa's up in the hills out of Maxwell. Mining claims are a dime a dozen up in that country. You couldn't even raise against a pair of jacks with a mining claim. Well, this here's a good claim. My pa take this claim himself. He was the smartest man in the territory. You ask anybody. Well, this isn't even a real claim. Doesn't prove you own it. Well, I know what. Uh, I, I got the rest of the papers in my room. My pa left a lot of papers. I got a lantern. Uh, don't cost you nothing to look. All right. I'll take a look. The reason I don't keep them all in one place is... It ain't smart. You never know when there might be a fire or something. Say, I, uh... I don't suppose you've got a flask on you for emergencies, have you? I didn't guess so. I... How about it, Mr. Addison? That's worth $100, ain't it? No. I wouldn't give you a Confederate picky union for your mining claim. But I'm willing to buy this paper. Oh. Oh, this one ain't for sale. Why not? 
I... I just can't sell it, that's all, Mr. Addison. It's, uh... Kind of like a medal from my pa. From government, it's, a uh, Metal he never got. Fifty dollars cash. That's a lot of liquor. I can't do it. A hundred. Mr. Addison, you just can't expect me to sell my pa's medal, can you? No. No, and I respect you for it, Ossie. But you shouldn't hide your medals. You ought to show them off a little. Show it off? Wow. Well, you've inherited quite a parcel of land here, Ossie. Sections 14, 15, and 16 of grant number 19140, as per map recorded in book 498, pages 37 to 39 of maps. Office of Territorial Records, Washington, D.C. Uh, maps and figures just give me a headache, Mr. Addison. It just uh, means a lot of sagebrush and rocks to me. Sagebrush, nothing. I've studied some of these local maps and sectional grants, and I think I know where that property is. And uh, now, uh, if you and I were partners... Well, where is this land? You're standing just about in the middle of it. You own the entire town of Cimarron City and a lot of the country around it. Nobody saw Ozzy around Cimarron City for the next three weeks. Then one morning he showed up. He'd returned to claim what Addison had led him to believe was rightly his. Morning, Mr. Fame. Just go on, Ozzy. Go on. Well, you don't want to talk to me like that, Mr. Fame. Now, just get on out of here. Mr. Fame, I don't like the way you talk to me. As a matter of fact, I never did like it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to throw you out. Oh, now, now go on out, Ozzy. I, I, I tell you, you come back about noon, I'll set you up some beans and fat back and a beer. But just go on out now. I said I'm going to throw you out. Clean off of my land. Your land? What are you talking about? The land this swill trough of yours is set now? I says, what do you mean, your land? It's mine. How did you get so foolish so early in the morning? <laughs> you know, I, I bought this place from old man Rockford, and you know it. The rest of this town, too. You want to know something? It's all mine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's the matter? Have you got the horrors this morning? No, I ain't got the horrors, but the rest of this town's going to. I own this here town of Cimarron City. I own it lock, stock, and barrel. It's left to me by my pa. Every one of you is squatting on my home. I'm going to make you pay. Hey, you hear that? Hey, hey, hey. I see here, old Cimarron City. Yeah, that's true. Oh, that's true. Oh, that's true. That's true. Oh, 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 that's true. Oh,
I wonder if you recall that the United States government in 1859 granted large tracts of lands to certain people in lieu of monies owed them. One of these being the late Virgil Harper. Yeah, I recall. Now suppose you get to the point. Well, it's simple. All of this land within city limits and to the north belongs to my client, Mr. Ossie Harper. Now, is that a fact? All of your various enterprises, um, real estate holdings, business locations, are on that land. Now, it would be a shame to lose your equity in them and have to locate elsewhere. Yes, that would be a dirty shame, all right. Now, my client bears you no ill will, Mr. Rockford, even though you are trespassing on his property. Did you put up the money for Aussie's claim? Well, that's beside the point. He has a good case, take my word for it, or I wouldn't be representing him. Now, we're willing to execute a quick claim in your favor for, uh, oh, say, ten cents for every dollar your property is worth. You're asking me to pay for my own land? Oh, we're asking much more from the others. Are they paying? They will. Well, Mr. Rockford. Goodbye, Mr. Addison. You mean you prefer being evicted? Goodbye, Mr. Addison. Oh. Now, let me go. What are you going to do when you throw Jed Fame out, Ozzy? You going to run the saloon? <laughs> Brain and fame drop. I give up drink. I ain't had one drink this morning. No. No, I ain't joking. I'm sober as a judge. Have a drink, Ozzy. You make more sense when you drop. King Ozzy. Ozzy. King Ozzy. Here's a pound. Oh, oh, Find Brader and have him come to my office as soon as he can. What for? I want to talk to him about the Virgil Harper claim. Lane. Hey, Fame. What's the matter? Rockford wants me to get lawyer Brader. You mean about Ossie? <laughs> What's he want a lawyer for? The whole thing's a big joke, ain't it? I don't know. Do you think he's got a case, Ed? Well, if the grant isn't a forgery, Funny, I never heard of it. My father was Virgil's closest friend. It seems to have been a mighty well-kept secret. Where would they have these records? A lot of old records were lost when Maxwell burned down some years back. Might be duplicates in the Department of Interior. In Washington? Uh-huh. <laughs> Aussie Harper, who'd have believed it? Oh, to me, for one. Like Matt says, nobody ever heard of this claim. I say forget all this legal hogwash. Some crooked sharper got a whole Aussie and made the whole thing up. Oh, no. The lawyers that filed this claim are well-known, very reputable. If we can't find a quit claim signed by Virgil Harper, Aussie's got a good case. We got there, but we more three drinks out. Hey, after all this is to be mine. <laughs> Swill-soaked, rum-brained Aussie Harper. And you're willing to believe that he owns us lock, stock, and barrel. Guess I'd better pack. No, Matt. I can handle the litigation at the territory capital. I know, Ed, but I'm going to Washington. Now, look. Don't anyone pay a cent to Addison. He's trying to scare everybody into a stampede. If Virgil Harper did any signing, I'd better find the record of it and fast. Ossie has got a taste for power. So I would really like that better than liquor. I figured it would take me at least five days to get to the capital and another five to return. The stage took me to Fort Davis, a day and a half from Cimarron City. There, I boarded a train to Washington. Now, it was important that I didn't give Addison too much time. Before I left, he and his strong arm had already begun to put the bite on some of the townspeople. Unfortunately, none of them were sure that he and Ozzy weren't holding a valid claim. You think I'm gonna pay all that money to a rum-soaked pup on a lard-faced card sharp? Now, you get away from my place now! You see, Mr. Fenton, a large real estate operation like ours needs additional employees. Specialists. You ain't getting a plug nickel out of me. When the court rules in favor of Mr. Harper's claim, what we're asking now will be real cheap. Mr. Harper, I licked him once like a mangy dog, and I can do it again. 
Now, you take your power and your employee and get off my place. Now! Very well, Mr. Fenton. But don't complain later, I didn't warn you. Come on. I ain't changing my mind, Mr. Addison. I told you I bought this land from old man Rockford, and my title's registered at the land office. So is my client's. Now, which is the valid claim? I'll wait till Matt brings word back from Washington. That could be a very costly wait for you, Mr. Perry. Now, we're offering to sign a quick claim on your property for as low as five cents on the dollar before it goes to court. Now, if the court favors my client, we'll expect the full amount. Call it a guarantee that you won't be evicted. I'll wait for Matt Rockford's return. Oh, Mr. Scott. I was coming to see you next. Now, you look like a reasonable man. The kind of a man who'd be willing to invest a penny to save a dollar. I'm waiting for Matt Rockford, too, mister. The only claim Ossie Harper ever had was on about two feet of Jed Fame's bar. Well, you may be right. It may turn out to be an invalid claim, but we'll fight it. And we'll take it into every court that'll listen. Courts cost money, Mr. Scott, for you as well as for us. And you might be wrong. I'd as soon be wrong as let Ossie Harper make a jackass out of me. Well, you'll regret it. If you understood about business, you'd understand about title insurance. Yeah. Oh, Addison. Yes? Mr. Addison. Uh, I'm in the insurance business. Sam Hardesty. Hardesty. Oh, yes, yes. Your name is on my list, too. Oh, yes. Well, uh, title insurance uh, kind of makes sense to me. I mean, I like the idea, but your rates seem, well, they seem kind of high. Uh, say maybe, oh, one cent on a dollar? Mr. Hardesty, because you're the first person to show a little common sense around here, I'll accept three cents on the dollar from you. Three? Oh. Uh, how about, uh, well, say, two cents would be more... Now, you come right over to the saloon. I've got the papers here, and I'll, I'll buy you a drink while we fill them out, huh? Uh, yes. Here you are. This is your quid pro quo which means that my client waives all claims to your ranch and your grazing lands. Next. Hey, you're doing right good for me there with my land, ain't you? Hey, uh, you, uh, you want me to sign anything? No, that won't be necessary, Mr. Harper. I have your power of attorney. I'll do all your signing for you. You sign for me, and I'll spend for you. How's that for dividing up the chores? Now, here's a little in advance. Now, if you'll excuse me, I, I have some more claims to take care of. Great day. <laughs> Mr. Temple, Mr. Fame. Drinks on the house. Uh, I'm the house, you know. Hey, there's not uh, much in the way of customers. That's uh, bad management. Way I figure the bar don't spring often enough for a free round. I gotta change that. You hear that, Mr. Fame? We gotta build up a little goodwill. More free drinks on the house. Sure, I see. Sure who? Sure, Mr. Harper. Mr. Temple? Start drinking. Go on, take it out of the bottle. Who's measuring? No, thank you, Mr. Harper. Oh, hold on now. Uh, it don't sound exactly right coming from you. I don't aim to run this thing in the ground. It's just that certain people ought to have a little more respect for me, that's all. Ossie, you see those men over there? Do they look to you like they're going to have a lot of respect for you? Oh, I, I can fix that easy. Same as they always fixed it for me when I was broke and miserable. Mr. Fame, I'm buying every man in this place around. Come on, let's drink up, huh? Let's drink up and sing a little, huh? I mean, that's the best way to lose the miseries. Come on, how about a song from everybody? Come on. Shouldn't be in here, Martha. I hear you moved into the room upstairs, Ozzy. Best room in the place. Best room. Real china washstand set. Sheets on the bed. Real clean covers. At least as he was before I got my boots up on him. I'm a first-class, solid citizen now. 
You hear that, too? I say, are you still going through with this? What? Trying to squeeze money out of everybody in Cimarron City. I don't care nothing about money. I just want what's rightfully mine. My pa left it to me. I see. All the cattlemen out to the north worked hard for their spreads. There's no market since Kansas City and Abilene dropped their beef prices. And that don't bother me none. I ain't in the cattle business. I'm a landowner. Ossie, your father brought those men into this territory. He opened it up. He brought the wagon trains in. Yeah, I'll drink to that. He wanted to see this town grow. Your father. Martha, you trying to tell me my pa wouldn't have done this? Is that it? Well, he wouldn't have. No, no, he wouldn't. No, not my pa. Now, you know what he was doing? He was running for saint like it was an election or something. Well, he made it. Yeah. He's a saint around here, ain't he? Virgil Harper. Them guns hung up over the bar like he was Robert E. Lee and Abraham Lincoln all rolled into one. Virgil Harper. Virgil Harper riding out against the Indians. Virgil Harper was a man. He led the wagons west. Of all the brave young pioneers, Virgil was the best. Ossie, I heard my pa talk about him. He was a good man. You, uh, heard your pa talk about me? That's, uh... Virgil Harper's no good, liquor-soaked, dime pageant son. <laughs> Ain't it a shame? Once in a while, someone tries to reform me. Someone like you, maybe. Let's me set in the kitchen, feeds me off a of tinware. I ain't good enough for the parlor, the best china, the decent girls. Not Ossie. Haul him off the sidewalk and Teach him to crawl in the dust when a decent girl comes along. Ozzie, don't. You know I don't care what my pa says about you. I want to be your friend. You could have a lot of friends here in Cimarron City. Miss Fenton? I tell you something. I hate every man in this here town. I stand in front of them playing my guitar, singing a sweet song, a lousy two bits. And I hate them. I hate every one of them. Brader, my ma used to tell me that the devil can quote scripture. Well, I, I expect it's the same with lawyers. Now, I want to know, out and out, is this fella Addison bluffing, or has he got the cards? I honestly don't know, Fenton. Maybe, maybe not. Ossie's got some kind of claim, and it could cost a lot to fight it in court. Well, I'm no lawyer. But I figure without a claimant, there ain't no claim. Now, supposing that Ossie Harper dies without making a will and with no next to kin. Anybody here ever heard tell of any kin of Virgil Harper's? I remember Virgil saying Ossie was his last one. One like Ossie, it'd be enough to make anybody call it quits. All right. Supposing Ossie did die. What then, Mr. Breda? Then the land reverts to the government. And our titles are good. Uh-huh. Well, it appears to me that uh, we ain't got no problems at all. If Ossie Harper dies. We all know how hard he's working on killing himself with drink. All right, all right, hold on. We're going a little fast, aren't we? You heard Mr. Brader say there hasn't even been a preliminary hearing yet. Yeah, well, maybe there won't have to be one. Ossie could save everybody a lot of fuss by hurrying up his... ...save a lot of fuss by waiting for Matt to get back from Washington. See what he turns up. This has to be settled by law. There's a lot of law on a 12-gauge shotgun, point blank. You've got an old aching grudge against Ossie Harper, haven't you? My girl's got nothing to do with this. Ossie's just been asking for lead lately. Fenton! I want to tell you something. If Ossie Harper turns up with a rifle slug in him or a shotgun blast, I'm going to come looking for you. How come, Temple? You and Ossie planning on splitting the take?
How do you like that? He took a swing at me with a shotgun butt. All I said was, howdy. <sighs> Could have killed me. Evening. I just might have myself a drink. Please you, Mr. Fame. Times sure have changed, huh? Don't seem natural getting a drink over the bar without singing for it. Anybody else drinking? I was... I was just taking a walk. I, uh... I got tired. Sit in my hotel room upstairs, a real lonesome place, hotel room, uh, quiet. Kind of quiet in here, too, ain't it? Maybe I should have brought my guitar. Oh, I'm reminded of something. Mr. Fame, you wouldn't want to hold on to any property that wasn't rightfully yours. Belonged to me now, would you? I told you, Ossie, I brought it from Old Man Rock. Well, I don't, I don't mean the saloon. I mean, them guns. Anyone, what do you want them for, Ossie? Because well, they belong to me. Oh, they belong to my pa. He left them for me. Go ahead, Jed. Give him his pa's guns. Don't do it, Jed. Oh, we ain't trying to hold back anything that's rightfully Ossie's. Isn't that what you said, Temple? Now, listen to me, Wilson. We're not going to give Wait those guns... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We went along with you, Temple, didn't we? We're all waiting on that court of claims you wanted. Now, how would it look if we happen to keep some of Ozzy's rightful property from him? Kind of throw a shadow on our case, wouldn't it, Mr. Brader? They might make something of it, especially on appeal back east. Well, sure, we want to come into court with clean hands, don't we? Now, if Ozzy happens to get into trouble, uh, he'd have a chance, wouldn't he? That'd make it a fair fight, wouldn't it? Wilson, I'm giving you the same warning I gave Al Fenton. Go ahead, Jed. Give him to him. Heavy, ain't they? It's Al Fenton. The chambers are still empty. Scott, take two men and go after Burgess and Addison. Right. Yo, Bill, let's go. One of Addison's quit claims. I guess Fenton wouldn't sign. Pa! 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 Easy, Mark. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Ozzy started all of this. In my book, he's just as guilty as if he pulled the trigger. Isn't that right? That's right. That's right. right. Ossie, you better get out of here. Hmm? Ossie, Ossie, get out the back door fast. I ain't finished my drink. Oh, you liquor so fool. Now, come on, get out of here before they come looking for you. Well, they won't come looking for me for. I never wanted nobody killed. I never even wanted nobody's money. I, I just wanted folks to know Ossie Harper's got some rights, too. Well, you made your point. Come, you better find yourself a hidey hole and pour it in on top of you. Go. What for, Mr. Fane? I ain't no lower, no worse than I ever was. I'm just the same as always. Dead wrong. Dead drunk. Why not dead dead? Martha? 
What do you want, Aussie? The money. It's, it's all here in the bag. I aim to give it back. Every penny. My pa didn't pay any money for our place. He paid with his life. Can you give that back? I didn't have nothing to do with that, Martha. You know that, don't you? I didn't know there was going to be no killing. I wouldn't have nothing to do with no it killing. It matter, Aussie. It does. It... Look, I... I mean, I know I didn't get on good with your pa. He licked me good that last time, and, and I grudged him for that, but I didn't fix it for him to be killed. It's the same as if you pulled the trigger yourself, Ossie. You've started it all. No, no, listen. It was my land, that's all. I just wanted folks to know they was beholden to me. To Ossie Harper, who is good enough for the parlor, the best china. Killing ain't no part of it. Martha, you know that ain't my fault. Ossie. Oh, I had it all figured to come out different. I mean, it's all mixed up in my head what I wanted, but after it was all over, we was going to be able to sit in a rig, like the one I borrowed that time down delivery. And I'd be singing to you, gentle, and playing the soft, low strings on, on the far side of my guitar. You said you loved me then? I oh, see my pa is lying out there. The same as if you killed him yourself. I did love you. I wouldn't listen to what my pa said or any of the others. I could just shut my eyes. I knowed you was different. Different from those cow hands with their guns dragging. From the ranchers with nothing but Kansas City stock prices in their hearts. But it's different now. First you tried to drive the folks north along the river road off their land, and, and then my pa. Goodbye, Aussie. I'm never allowed to hurt no one. Not really, Martha. You believe me, don't you? Listen, I'm, I'm going to go get Mr. Addison. I'll, I'll make him come down here and tell you that I didn't fix for nobody to get hurt. I wouldn't do nothing to bring sadness on you. I love you. Rossi, I told you to get holed up somewheres and stay there. I gotta find Mr. Addison. He's gotta come with me. Your friend Addison and his gunman are long gone. He's gotta tell Martha how I didn't fix for no killing. Can't you get it through your soggy wits that Addison and that gunslinger made tracks the minute Al Fenton hit the dust? He's gotta come with me down to the barber shop and tell Martha. All right, Aussie. I'm gonna go home. Give me that bag. Mr. Addison, I come looking for you. I'd have been 20 miles away from here if you hadn't taken that bag out of my room. Now give it to me. Mr. Addison, Hal Fenton's been killed. I see. This is a gun in my hand. Now give me the bag or I'll use it. You gotta come with me and tell Martha I didn't have nothing to do with that. You gotta tell her. You gotta come down to the barber shop with me and tell her. Listen Martha. to me, you liquor-soaked fool. It's time to move. Now come on, we'll both get out of here. Folks paid you this money for quick claims. That belongs to me. This is my land, you hear? You couldn't have collected a nickel of that money. Do you think any court would back up the claim of a drunken bum left to him by a fool? Fool? That's my pa's land. Your pa signed a waiver, a quit claim. He gave up the grant. Now, do you understand that? That was his medal. My pa wouldn't have signed away his medal. People wonder how come Virgil Harper's son is a drunken bum. Well, it's easy. He had a drunken bum for a father. Your pa probably gambled that claim away for a bottle of rum. No! You can't talk about my pa like that! That's a lie, do you hear? That's a lie! I thought he'd bring the whole town up before you got here. What about horses? I'll get you a rig. Good. Now, here's the plan. We'll separate. Fine. But I'll carry that satchel. It'll be easier for you to manage the horses. All right. But we'll meet tomorrow. 
up by that old cabin by Sanchez Rocks. What about him? Let him lie there. By now, they'll be looking for anybody to hang. He'll be handy. Howdy, Lane. Howdy, Matt. Glad to have you back. Things got a little out of hand. Al Fenton got himself killed by Addison's hired gun. Addison got himself a bankful, and I've got some men out looking for him now. When did it happen? Last night. They're willing to settle for Ozzy Harper's neck. Quite a mob headed for the saloon just a few minutes ago. Now, sit me down and get out of here. I, I'm not handing Ossie over to you. Go try it, Frank. Ossie, go back inside. It's all right, Mr. Fame. Thanks, just the same. Come on, Just in time. Now, hold on, men. I've got some news. Ozzy's claim is... We don't need no news. Al Fenton's dead and Ozzy did it. Didn't have nothing to do with that. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Now, hold on, men. Right. Hold, hold it! Now, Matt's got something to say. You're going to listen. Ozzy has no claim. I found a record in the Quartermaster General's office in Washington. Virgil Harper signed a waiver. That means all your land titles are good. Yeah, but that don't do Al Fenton no good. Ozzy started it. Look here, Frank. You know Ozzy as well as I do. It was that hired gun in Addison. Ozzy was taken in just like the rest of you. Yeah, well, maybe you're right. Look at him. He doesn't have the spine to do nothing. Unless a weasel like Addison put him up to it. He ain't even worth hanging. Let's not waste any more time on Ozzy. I'm forming another posse in front of the office. Come on. Right, Come on. This is one time you could use a drink. Bottle, Pete. Mr. Rock, he said my pa. He said he swapped everything for liquor. That ain't true now. I'm afraid it is, Ossie. Oh, no, it can't be. He shouldn't have said that about my pa. I'm a liquor hound, that's all right. But it ain't true about my pa. Now, you know that. Ossie, that doesn't take away from what he did. But ever since I was a shirt-tailed kid, folks been saying, Ossie, you ain't doing right. How you expect to grow up to be the man your pa was? How come they say that, Mr. Rock? It seems like folks only remember the good. Well, I figured it was no use. I mean, even if I tried to be like my pa, people would only remember Virgil Harper. So I didn't try. Every man has a weakness, Ozzie. Your pa was no different. Now, the only way to cut down on a weakness is to is to build up a strength, a powerful strength, in the other way. Now, your pa did that. No. Mr. Addison was lying. My pa wasn't no drunk, you hear? I ain't been singing lies all these years. He went off alone into the hills where them Indians was waiting for him, didn't he? Yes, he did that, Ossie. And you could, too. Anybody could. Thing is, not many do, that's all. No. There's no use trying. That's the difference between you and your pa. He'd try anything. All right, if I join the posse, Mr. Rock? You'd better stay in town with me. Help me keep an eye on things. Figure I'm just a rum dum, that it? What are you up to, Ossie? Ossie ain't gonna find Mr. Addison in that hired gun. I know where they went. I heard them. I'll find them. Don't you think you ought to let Mr. Rockford know? I don't need Mr. Rock. I don't need nobody. 
Just me. And my pa's guns. beginning to worry about you. I had to skirt the posse three times. Let's split up the winners. All right, just set it on the ground, mister. Set it on the ground and you both get in the wagon. Well, I see. Aren't those your father's guns from over the bar? Yeah, they got a good record. Well, but how long have they been hanging up there? 20 years, maybe? Rusty is the inside of your water cup, I'll bet. I'm gonna let you feel my pa's guns. <laughs> well, now, Ossie, maybe they'll make a hero out of you now, same as they did your pa. I imagine he died the same glorious way, all fired up on rot gut, riding full blast at the Indians, waving a bottle in each hand. Oh, why not? My pa never was no saint like everyone made him out to be. Only I never knowed that till you showed up. I owe you a lot, Mr. Addison. Now, I don't have to try no more to be something nobody can. Maybe I ought to thank you. But I'm going to kill you, Mr. Addison. Only one person in Cimarron cared a plugged nickel for me. And you killed that! No! Murray, you stop him! Shoot! You all right, Ossie? The money's there in that bag. So you're wearing your pop's guns. Let him hang in Mr. Fame's saloon, Mr. Rock. Might be I was cut out for something else. Maybe I don't have to try to be what I'm not. See? Evening. Hey, that looks mighty nice. How about coming inside and singing us a few pretty songs? No, not in there, Mr. Rockford. Nothing but tin ears in that saloon. Now, a pretty tune needs someone just as pretty to listen. I think you've got a point there, Rossi. Good luck to you. I don't look much like a lover. She sang over evenings when we were alone. There was a big change in Aussie. The Oklahoma Saloon had lost its best customer. Cimarron City had gained a solid citizen. Mm -hmm.